Hi friends, my name is Akir Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to load only specific files from a folder in SSIS. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is how we can load the only specific files from a folder in SSIS. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber GCO and the question was the similar one that suppose I have a folder and in the folder we have 10 files. So we want to load only two specific files and the file name should be dynamic so that we can change it easily. So then how we can load only the specific files from a particular folder. So let's jump to the demo. In my D files location, I got six files here, test date underscore one, test date underscore two, and then three, four, five, six, and so on, okay? So suppose I want to load only the first two files, like test date underscore one, and I want to load test date underscore two files. So I just want to load only two files from this particular folder, and the file name can be anything, okay? There can be two files or there can be three files. So what I will do, I will insert the name of the files in a SQL Server table so that today there are two files to import and tomorrow there are three files to import so that I can modify the file names in a SQL Server table very easily and the SSIS package should only load the files whose name is stored in a SQL Server table. So I have SQL Server 2019 instance and in the work database I have created a table file names okay and I will be storing the name of the files those I want to load. So I just created a table here and then I inserted two entries into the table test data underscore one dot csv and test data underscore two dot csv okay so the final data in my table it contains only two files this one test data underscore one dot csv and test data underscore two dot csv so only these two files should be loaded I will share all the create table statement with you and I will also share all the files with you as well so that you can test it in your environment so let me just open the SSIS package and start writing the code for this particular case. I will be creating two SSIS variables here. The first variable will be file path. So I will write file path here and the data type will be string. So file path will be used when the for each loop container will iterate through all the files. So the current value of the file path will be assigned to the file path SSIS variable. So the default value to this particular variable, I can provide the value from here and maybe I can provide the value as test data underscore one. All right. And now the another variable I will create is should load the file. Okay. Should load the file. So there should be only two possible values here. The value can be either yes or it can be no. Okay. So let me put the default value as no. So what we will do that we will use a for each loop container and when the iteration will run, so it will check that whatever file is currently selected, does that file also contains in this particular SQL server table. If the file contains, then we will set the value of the should load the file as yes. Otherwise we will set the value of should load the file as no. Okay. So if the value of the should load the file will be yes, only then the file will be loaded otherwise the file won't be loaded okay so first of all let me just create a basic package where the for each loop container will load all the files and then i will modify this particular code so let me just configure the for each loop container with file enumerator so from the collection type i will select the for each file enumerator and i will browse the folder so my files are situated in the d files location so I will select this one and because my file type are CSV, so I will put star.csv here. Now under variable mappings, I will select the file path SSIS variable here. Now I can click OK. Now let me just drag and drop the data flow task into the for each loop container. So data flow task will be used to import the flat file into the SQL server table. So let me just configure the data flow task. Because we are going to read the data from a CSV file, so we will be using a flat file source. So I can just drag and drop the flat file source into the data flow task and then I can just configure the flat file source. So let me make a new flat file connection manager to the CSV file. I will call the connection manager as flat file and then I can just browse the files. My file type is CSV, so I can select CSV here and then I can select any file from here as of now. Now if I click on the preview, so data seems good to me here so I can click OK I can click OK and now I can make the connection as dynamic so I can right click on the flat file go to the properties and then under expressions 
I need to select the connection string property and then I will assign the value from the file path to the connection string so that during the iteration of the for each loop container the value of the file path will change for each file and the flat file connection manager will point to that particular file at that moment so I can click on OK and now in the SQL server table I also want to insert the file path as well so that I know that this particular data has been loaded from this file okay so I can just use a drive column transformation in between the flat file and the OLEDB destination and I can connect the flat file source with the drive column transformation and now I can right click and configure the drive column transformation here I will call the new column as file name and then I can just drag and drop the file path into the expressions so this will create a new column of data type n varchar 23 but I want the data type of the column as varchar 50 so I can just type cast it so I can write dt underscore str comma length of the field so which, which will be 50 and then 1252 is the code page for the string so now the data type of this particular column file name will be varchar 50 so I can click on ok and now I want to write this particular data into a SQL server table so I will be using the OLEDB destination and now I can connect the drive column transformation with the OLEDB destination and I can configure the OLEDB destination I can create a new connection here we already have a connection to the work database so I can select this connection from here and I can click on OK from data access mode I will select table of view fast load now I can click on new to create a new table and I can call my new table as country if you notice we got a new file name as well file name in addition to the above columns ID first name last name address and country so for example if you check the data in this particular file so we got only these five columns ID first name last name address and country okay so one extra column file name has been added as well so I can click on ok and now you can click on mappings to make sure that all input columns have been mapped with the destination columns so this seems good and I can click on ok so we have configured the SSIS package so this is one of the basic SSIS package and when you will execute this SSIS package so it will import the data from these six CSV files into the SQL server table so let me execute the SSIS package and show you that it should load the data from the six files as of now so the package ran fine and if you try to select the data from the country table so you can see that we got the 6000 rows actually each file contains 1000 rows file name this is the data from the test date underscore 1 dot csv now this is the data from the test date underscore 2 dot csv now from test date underscore 3 dot csv and then 4 5 and 6 so the table contains data from all six csv files okay now let me just truncate this particular table and now the table should be empty okay and now let me just modify this particular code and then we should import the data only from the files those are stored in a SQL server table file name okay so this is the R SQL server table file name now what we need to do we can just drag and drop the script task into the for each loop container and the script task actually can decide which files to load okay so I can just configure the script task now from the read only variables we will select the file path because we want to read the value of the file path inside the script task so I will select the file path here now inside the read write variables we will select the should load the file because this particular variable value will be assigned into the this particular script task so maybe I can copy the name of this particular variable and I can click on edit script so the script editor will be opened up where we can write our C sharp code alright so the script editor has been opened up and we can write our code here so let me paste the name of the SSIS variable so in this particular task what we will do that we will read the name of the CSV files from this particular SQL table and then we will check that the current file that is being read using the for each loop container we will check whether that particular file contains in this particular table or not so if the file that we are currently loading through for each loop container if that particular CSV file contains in this particular table then we will load that particular file otherwise we won't load that particular file okay so I have already written some code here where I'm just reading the file names from the file name SQL table and then I'm just checking that whether the file that we are loading through for each loop container whether the file 
exist in a SQL Server table or not. So let me just copy this code and I will explain you this code in a moment. So I can just copy all the code here. All right. It's saying that there are some missing namespaces. So I can click on show potential fixes using system.data.sql client this is used to use the sql command sql connection classes so it is saying that the list is also missing so we can click on show potential fixes and we need to add system.collections.generic so i think we are good here so let me just tell you what we are doing here so in this particular code what we are doing we have declared a connection string here that the server name is this one this is database name and we are using the windows authentication and now we have declared a local variable file name and then we have we are using a list here so that we will append the values from the sql server table into the list and then we will check that the file that is being loaded by for each loop container whether the file contains in the list or not so if the file contains in the list it means that we should load the file otherwise we should not load the file okay so now we are using a try block here and then we have made a new sql connection here now in the sql query we are just simply selecting the file names from the file names table so this is the query that we are running so as of now it is returning two file names okay now we are just simply making a sql command variable here and then we are passing the sql qu query along with the sql connection and then opening the sql connection we have declared a sql data reader here and then we are just looping through all the rows okay so until the data reader will be reading the rows what we are doing that we are getting the value of the file name and assigning it to a local variable file name and then simply appending the file name into the list there is a list names that we declared here so we are adding the value to the names dot add file name okay so all the csv file names those are available in the sql server table those values will be append it to the list here okay and then if this loop will end then we will just write in the, into the console that no data found now we are just closing the data reader and then closing the sql connection here so this is what we are doing okay so after this particular code whatever we have read from the sql server table that value will be appended to the list okay and now what we will do we will declare a ssis variable ssis file name equal to and then we will assign the value from the dts dot variables file path dot value dot to string okay so this will get the value of the file path from the file path ssis variable and now we need to get the file name from the file path so there is a class system dot io dot path dot get file name okay so this way it will get the file name from the file path okay and then we will assign that particular file name to the local ssis variable here now what we will do we will check that if names names is a list here okay if names dot contains contains is a function which will tell you if a particular value contains in a list or not so we will check if the ssis file name contains in the list it means that the file should be loaded okay otherwise file should not be loaded so we have created a ssis variable here should load the file okay so what we will do that if the file contains in the list then we will set dts dot variables this value dot value equal to yes otherwise we will set the value to no okay so i can set the value to no in other case so this is the only code that i'm writing here and i will share all this code with you so you can download it if you want and now i can just simply close this particular code click on ok and now i can just double click on the script task and from the evaluation operation i will select expression and constants and then under expressions i will simply write should load the file equal to yes so if it will be equal to yes it means that we will load the file otherwise we won't load the file okay so this is done the ssis package is complete and just to show you i can put a breakpoint on the on post execute event here and i can click on okay and now when the package will run then i can show you the values for the file path and the 
should load the file values okay so the value should be yes only for the first two files testdata underscore one dot csv and testdata underscore two dot csv and only these two files should be loaded and rest four files should not be loaded okay so let me execute the ssis package all right so the script task has been completed and if i open the debug menu go to the windows locals okay and if i expand the variables so th there are two variables file path so the values test data underscore one dot csv and should load the file so the value is yes okay so what we will do we will right click on it and click on add watch and then i will again go back to the locals window and uh, i will add the should load the file to the watch again add watch okay so i am interested only in these two variables okay so the value for the first file is test date underscore one dot csv and should load the file is yes so this file should be loaded and this is loaded because this file contains in a sql server table okay test date underscore one dot csv now i can click on continue button so th the file got loaded and you can check it in the country table so there should be 1000 rows okay and the value for the file name is test data underscore one dot csv for all the records so this is good now because i clicked on the continue so after the script task the value of the file path is test data underscore two dot csv file and should load the file is yes again so this file should be loaded again okay so now if i go back to the sql server table and if i rerun the query so there should be 2000 rows and there should be two type of values test data underscore one and test data underscore two okay so there are two type of values here now because i clicked on the continue so for the third file test data underscore three the value of the should load the file is no and this file should not be loaded so if i click on continue so the the file should not be loaded and i can just recheck it there should be just 2000 rows okay so no more rows got loaded similarly for the fourth file the value of the should load the file is no and the file should not be loaded similarly for the test data underscore five the value of the should load the file is no and the file should not be loaded and same is the case for the sixth file as well that the value of the sixth file is test data underscore six dot csv and the should load the file is no again okay and if you check the data in the country table so there are just 2000 rows and the value of the file name is just test data underscore one and test data underscore two this is because these two files are exist in the file names sql server table so tomorrow for example if you want to import test data underscore four dot csv and test data underscore six dot csv so you can just modify the file name in this particular sql server table and the SSIS package should only import those two files okay so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much